O e amai la pai ki ana e amai ka mau inuia ka mama mai ka hama kua loa e ki kula ka mao mao. E amai ki ki hei ka meheo e ki ala ali i ulu vehi vehi ki ki hai ki ane hulani no kanaha. He aki ki kai wa kana loa ki olo ku kila kila kau i ka hana 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 wale ke ao ma lama lama ka maha o ma ka hawa le wai me ka ohu ohu o i au. No maui nui a ka maki ka ma aloha aina hoa i ka lama ku aho o ma lama lama. Ma lama i a ka ike kupuna o ka po kua e la ke au koa ke ka maka kali kukui. E o i koe noa nga kua kau i ka meheo nga kupuna ma ama ama kukui uloa e ka ike o loko ulu ma hie hie mai kahi pai a kahi pai a mau inui. Ka hea ho i mai uke i kai. E o hawa i pai aina e ho o pa ai ka wa ai ke ala kupuna pa nahe nahe mai la kamakani ki kai maali e. Moani mai ki ala ona ona ka lei aloha. He lei aloha noi a. Aloha kakoe. Aloha mai. Oh, that was an explosive introduction. Wasn't definitely prepared for that one. But we persistent, always persistent on the trials and tribulations that we face, especially at this time. So I get kind of an interesting PowerPoint for everybody to consider. This PowerPoint is being used right now as a cultural uh, sensitivity training for the new people that come to our aina in hopes to help us with our issues and endeavors in Lahaina. So a lot of the different people that come throughout the world especially with the federal departments and a lot of the uh, organizations, there's a lot that has invaded our town. And this culture sensitivity training is to inform a lot of the people that come here that know little about our place to make sure that when they walk in our town, that they walk quiet. So, and I started by addressing our aina, especially Komohana, as Mauna Kahalawai. And what Mauna Kahalawai has a lot to offer. So the last conversation we had um, about water, coming from a place known as Mauna Kahalawai, where the waters meet is one of the most important topics that we always have to talk about, especially dealing with um, future endeavors, and now we are faced with the biggest challenge of our life. So my kuleana basically is to try to educate people of what they know about our vahipana, what they know about our place, and what they don't know about our place. So mauna kabahine is on the west where the sun sets into the ocean. From the rising of the setting to the, uh, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. In the east, you have Iao. In the west, you have Mauna Kawahine. Then we have Mo'o'a here. Right on the tail end of Mo'o'a here is where I live and lands that was awarded from the time of the kingdom. Then you have Moku'ula. Mo'oku'ula, the altar of the lizard. These are the kind of traits and, and education that I've uh, been privy to by being involved as soon as we came home back in 1996 by Akoni Akana. Then from Akoni Akana, Shirley Kaha'i, then from Shirley Kaha'i, the third generation was Blossom Patera. After that, the management of Moku'ula fell under Naikane Maui Cultural and Research Center. This is Pa'u Pa'u, always a reminder for us, 
but there's a deeper meaning behind pa'u pa'u that involves two individuals, a kane and a wahini. Those of you who know it, my kai. Those of you who don't, you have homework. Pu'u kahili, that separates the hill of the standard, which is right in the backlash of this valley. Then you have kawa ula. Kawa, you and I, ula. Anything that is red is sacred. So we call this place the sacredness of dualities. How majestic it stands between the private part of the man and the private part of the woman. Where Keopulani was born in Paukukalo and was prophesied that she would follow the fuel of the sun. She was born here and lays to rest at Wyola Church today. Kawi Keoli, Nahiana this town was very prominent because of these two children. Liho Liho was the eldest, and this was the father, Kamehameha Ekahi. The regent, Kaahumanu. From her reign, fell upon the diminishing of the couple system, where Kani and Wahini could feast with each other as we are at this moment. Then we have David Malo. First one ordained in the Christian ministry and educated Lion Aluna, oldest school, west side of the Rockies, 1831. Then we have Princess Ruth Kili Kolani, which governed over a lot of these Mauka lands of Kuia, now managed by Pawahi Kamehameha schools. This is a map of Lahaina, 1790. And this map shows something that a lot of us forgot, the name of our place. Does anybody know the name of that street that goes right down the center of Lahaina town? It's called Front Street. The actual name, oh, Shaw Street, the actual name is Alanui Kamamo, the way of the people. Front Street, Alanui Kamoi. Then we have Alanui Opi'ilani, today known as Nohono Opi'ilani. Luokini, the sacred way, once known as Alanui on Nahi Ena Ena. Alanui Hoapili, today known as Wainee. Alanui Papu, Prison Street. Then we have Haola, the Hola stone that sits silently, majestic along the shorelines of the Ao Ao channel that separates Lahaina and Lanai. The Haola stone, the last child conceived at the Haola, her name was Kalai Aheana, today known majestically as the deified Kiha Vahine. Then we have Moko'ula, Mo'oku'ula, the altar of the lizard. Alanui of Panaeva, Alanui Lahaina Luna. Lahaina Luna still exists, but it's in the wrong place. Lahaina Luna now stands today in the area called Panaeva. And Panaeva stands in an area known as Dickinson Street. So our mission as Naikani of Maui is trying to resurrect what? is actually the actual names of the Alanuis and the Alahelis of our town. Reasons why, because our future generations tomorrow are forgetting our place, are forgetting the Mo'olelo of our past. So we are in dire need to bring back the actual names of our town. Our town was meant to be Believe it or not, 
and Mr. Kai here can attest to that. Little America. So we are urgently trying as best as we can to have the county consider the actual names of the actual roadways of an important place that is registered on the National Historic Registry. Kalimua <laughs> Pi'ilani. There's a great barrier reef from Poor Mana that stretches all around Tomala. The Ao Ao Channel. Uo, the most famous surfing spot. Only men put kings. Now subjected once before by 29 surf schools. So our town is decaying, had been decaying for years. This is Mokohinia. Just imagine that you're standing on the island of Mokohinia looking Mauka. And I always say this, everybody looks at Mauka and they say, what a beautiful place. I live in the mountains and I see totally the difference between what everybody sees when they look Mauka. I see drastic changes that are coming upon us. I see plagues. I see too many things that doesn't belong there. And that's why it's very important for us to try to convince people to look Mauka to Makaya that we can have a better management understanding on how we should go forward on beautifying our town. Here's another rendition of Moku'ula, the island. The royal mausoleum that stood on the island that held 176 lineal descendant ali'i. Nahiana Ena's compound, right across the street from Moku'ula. and Mokoula surrounded by the fish pond of Mokohinia. The Halepula, which was the house of the iron roof, where Kamehameha III did all his business, even during the time of Lakuokoa, when Timoteo Ha'alilio and Kawikeoli walked down Alanui Kamo'i to Mala, where Timoteo Ha'alilio left on a vessel to Europe to sanctify the relationship of Hawaii and the independence of our nation in 1848. Alanui Mamo, Alanui Mo'i. This is a map, 1823, that shows that Lahaina was the Venice of the Pacific, where we had waterways stretched out for miles, one away, nine miles long, built by our Ali'i during the Pi'ilani line. That away is actually right next to our Kauhale, way up in the mountains. And we managed that away. But that Hawaii has been dry. So this meeting that we had was really important on how we need to bring these things back, how we need to build, bring these values back. The prophetic vision of Keopuolani. We know of her, but do we know actually what had happened when she passed? The many ali'i that came from all over the South Pacific to be with her, to honor her on her passing. The funeral procession that took place where the women of Lahaina carried the stones to build the Halekamani as the Kane followed behind carrying a feather standard. The women of Lahaina were very powerful and still powerful today. And I tell everybody, either way, I wear the pants in my family, but my wife get the belt. (laughs) 
a lot of things that, ha that had occurred in Lahaina. We, we cannot forget about, we're starting to forget these things every time an Ali'i passes. What happens? You know, I bring honor also to, and I don't know whether or not everybody realizes this, but the longshoremen, Steve Oz, ILWU, they were strong supporters of the government back then. They were the ones that also took part in the funeral processions of every Ali'i. So, I mahalo ILWU because they have always been there, not just for our Ali'i, but still today for our people. And I used to say, oh boy, it's ILWU guys, they get some power. Because if they like shut down Hawaii, stop sending toilet paper. <laughs> These are actual events that occurred. Nagi Ena Ena when, they, when she passed, funeral procession. The biggest funeral procession I remember was Yosepa Mawaihi in Hilo. 10 days long, the funeral procession was 10 miles long. This is how much it showed that we love our Nali'i, and we love our families, and we love our people. Okay, so most important factors to remember, Lahaina was the original capital of Hawaii. Still is, even more now. So when I talk about the reset button, let's talk about those kind of things. Lahaina became the epicenter for politics, innovation, and trade. Lahaina led Hawaii by creating and adopting the first constitution. The Bill of Rights as well was signed by His Majesty Kamehameha III, Kawikiuli, here in Lahaina. These few basic facts practically unheard of by the average person, much less the many tourists that come to our shores. You know, we had discussions about whether or not tourism is important, tourism isn't important. I consider tourism to be the elephant in the building. A lot of times, every time we gotta talk about how we're going to sustain ourselves on an island. It's true fact, those kind of things. Nothing ever resonated within our town where we needed to keep that national historic registry. This is the only thing that we have to show anything pre-contact in Lahaina. And now that building, this Halevai, which was built in 2010, is now gone. There was um, the Hale up in Iao Valley. I remember back then I sat in this ceremony and Alan Arakawa was the mayor at that time and they gave me the Aba Cup and I said, my kala hiki kui kahale. A kala kau a ole kahale. That in the rising of the sun, there stands a house. But when the sun sets into the ocean in Lahaina, we have no house for our people to gather. From that, we had a house. We had a hale. So we can go forward and having the important meetings with different people that come from all over, from Tahiti, from Tonga, from Aotearoa, all these places. This is the missing element that we didn't have what was a house, a hale, a place so we can congregate, so we can show that we are indigenous to this aina. So I just said, oh, well, if the county ain't gonna let me do it, I'm just gonna do it anyway. So I did. with the help of the Nama'u Ohana. <laughs> and a lot of the Kula Kayopuni kids that came to put all the signs up down Front Street, now known as Alanui Kamo'i. So this kind of triggered something. It triggered 
to get the county involved, to tell the county we need to do these kinds of things because we're losing the true essence of our town. The possibility of putting all the names back, all the original names back. So they came, they met with me, and they looked at the sign, and they looked at me, and they said, let's leave it. It looks great. So I'm like, okay, that triggers me to say, let's not wait for all the approval for all the signs. Let's just do all the roadways and change everything back. You know, I always have a tendency of saying, it's better to occupy than to ask. <laughs> I'm looking for see where Keani Rollins is. Keani, are you in the house? <laughs> okay. But then years and years of get, doing presentations in front of the County Cultural Resources Commission, um, you know, even in front of the County Budget and Finance Committee, um, back in 2020, 2021, the county made the approval to support all the recommendations from my county, not just changing the names of the street. Well, let, let me take that back. We can't change the name of the street because the postal service would get really lost trying to figure out where is what. So they said, maybe we can put the sign below Front Street, below Shaw Street, I said, okay, then hopefully in five years I can get rid of the sign on the top and leave the sign on the bottom. Here's another one, right in front of our building, there was a canal, it's called Pahu Mana Mana. It was covered up because of liability. Some drunk guy drove in a canal, the car was stuck inside the canal for I think about two weeks, nobody moved it. And kind of similar to the boat that washed up along the shore that it took a resolution from the legislation in order to pull that boat out. Similar to this. So I requested to the county, we need to move all this wood because it's hiding the historic properties under this area that Pahu Manamana is turning into a mosquito haven. So the county says, it's not ours, it belongs to the state. So I went to the state, I said, I want to clean it up. And the state says, okay, but well, we cannot sign one hold harmless agreement for you. You just got to do it yourself. And I'm like, okay, we'll do it. So me and my son clean the whole thing up, bring that muli vibe back, make this area viable again. And the good part is I got enough lumber to take up to my kuleana and build another house. Thanks to the county. <coughs> uh, the Lahaina Library. Also another one, which is known as Kamehameha Ekahi's Kalo Patch. Then that made me think, Kalo Patch. For the king to prostrate himself in front of cameras it was kapu. Then I started to think, well, if you want to be a compassionate king, try to rule over Maui especially from the line of Pi'ilani and the Kahikili side, you better prostrate in front of the people of Maui. And that is where Kamehameha gained his trust with the people of Pi'ilani. The Haola Stone. Dealing with an endeavor just about a month ago that all the boats in that harbor all burnt, 80 boats that had to be drugged out of that harbor. One of them was pressing up on a stone. Before they even moved any, I made the recommendation to the US Coast Guard that that boat needs to move now. And they moved it. They moved it away. Oh, and that's me in my real life. <laughs> but it's all about, we gotta understand what's up Mauka and what's down Makai. What is the cultural value? What is it that exists way in the mountains versus what exists way down the shoreline that has a pre-contact, post-contact era of things when it, you talk about cultural and generational knowledge? Those kind of gaps we're missing. So, Naikani o Maui has been a very instrumental component when addressing land and water rights in Lahaina, especially throughout uh, Maui Komohana. 
All these rights that existed are rights that are pertinent still today. And that's what makes us move in the direction that we need to move in order for people to listen to what we have to say. It hasn't been that simple back then. But I think even more now, it's a need to really understand what is happening in Mauka versus what is happening in Makai. Mauka, we have resources. Makai, everything was drained to zero. When they talk about Lahaina being the Venice of the Pacific, where is that? Not until we found out after the fire when those four wells burnt, everything came back. The fish ponds of Kalua Ehu is now flowing again. The Awai of Pahumanamana is now flowing again. So sometimes bad things have to happen in order to see the bountiful beauty of our Aina protrude forward naturally. This is Akua driven. All the work that we've done in the past to make sure that we understand the generational knowledge that came from our kupuna on how to uhau pohaku. All the ceremony that we do and the papakanaka opu kola, the temple of state affairs. We need to set ourselves forward in order for us to manage our resources and bring Moko Ula back to his final glory. Now we run a cultural monitors program in Lahaina. And Kella touched up a bit of, on it. A lot of the cultural monitors we have our lineal descendants to that town. They not only lost houses, they also lost families too. So we're here too to serve not just keynoting and talk story, but we have a table over there. And we're looking for potential hire for people to help us clean up this town. Naikani Maui. we're looking for workers. Uh, Aina Archaeology, Chitanya Lee Gregg is looking for people. AEPAC also is another component that is looking for people. Anybody that is interested, yeah, to help us clean our town. This is the vision. This is something that was put together in 1961 but never came to fusion. There's a possibility that we can do certain things to make things apply to what have, should have been applied to, to keep that character, to keep our town, to keep our vahipana, and the capital of the kingdom, still resilient, to invoke those things that apply to something that was done to our people without consent. So basically what you're looking at, when I talked about we filed for the water use permit application to bring the water back to Mokoula, that is our first endeavor. Once we get the water back, and once we get everything back in its rightful place, then we can go forward. But we cannot without the help of everybody here. We need more advocates to make sure that our town, that things like this doesn't ever happen again. And it all starts with this area. So just something to think about. We have gone many years, and the mission that I send is the mission that was left for all of us from the time when Akoni took charge of this. We had many debates on how this land would flourish again, 
we have great possibilities of our future generations stepping up to the plate now. And I'm just hoping that through this, all of us can find that right solution to make things whole again. And I know we can. So I've served many years in the Cultural Resources Commission. I still serve today in the Maui Lanai Island Barrow Council, the Native Hawaiian Historic Preservation Council and advisory to the Board of Trustees of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I also served in as the West Pacific Regional Fisheries Management Council. I'm a political wreck. I just wanted to go home and plant kalo. Now my children take on that responsibility so I can make sure that somebody is at the sluice gate, making sure that nobody tampers with our resources ever again. And that's the start in that direction. And I welcome all of you to join us in our fight for liberty and justice for our town. It's a plea. We need help. Every day goes by. Every effort that is done to malama what little we have. It's our burden. But then we have to look at it as a good burden because Lahaina will return. Maui will return. We just need to stay persistent. We need to believe in Akua. We need to believe in each other then we can go forward together as one. In mahalo no kako. Hawaii moko kea ve kaya kala e puka mai la e ai ala o mai no no bila ni nui a kama kaula na no e hale a kala puka mai la kiki kia kana lo a lo a lo a kala e hano hano kia la i tahi ji iki a kola no i la na i kaula la au kua e la kia lo ha o pu upehe u e ki kapo ma moloka i o moloka i la i tafule o o. Yo o aho ke ne o kaku e heva ku hi ku hi vale o kala i kala ni hali a kana ni makawa i o mano kala ni po mano mano ke o ni a o no hiri pili mai la o ni e hau ka aina o ka hele la ni ta aina i uhia ta pu pu e a makula ni huna ka mana o no ka mole o loe hua male hua kala e na po ana e Aloha e, aloha e, aloha e, nā kūpuna no ta pai aino a Hawaii nui a kea. Aloha e, aloha. <laughs>